Namaskar. What is the greatest opportunity for spiritual transformation? Some people would say visiting a great spiritual master. Others might say attending a 24 hours kirtan, devotional dance. Others would say attending a five-day spiritual conference with 1,000 people in the nature. Well, I'd like to answer this question by sharing a story I heard from one of my senior colleagues, which I think um, is very appropriate. This Dada, he, he met the master, and the master began by saying, you know, when people love each other, uh, they like to give gifts. So the, the father likes to give a gift to his child. The husband or the wife would like to give a gift to her, her husband. Friend gives gift to another friend, and so on and so forth. So then the master asked to Dada, so would you like me to give you a gift? Dada was quite uh, excited, <laughs> thinking he might get some, you know, very high spiritual realization. And um, he said, yes, uh, yes, I'd like to receive a gift. And then the master went into, you know, kind of like a somber mood and, and uh, spoke very slowly and very deeply as if he's, he's going he's gonna to say something very important to, to Dada. And he said very slowly, in the moment of your greatest pain, in the moment of your greatest suffering, think that this is a gift from the Supreme Consciousness. So, you know, that memory of that experience has helped Dada, who has you know, been a Dada for over 50 years, in so many situations, and I also <laughs> have found it very helpful for me. Because sometimes when these things happen to us which have no explanation, we, we tend to, we, we might become the victim. We might develop a victim psychology. Why me? What did I do to deserve this? How come this is happening to me, this, uh, to the, ha happening now to me? in this way. And to some people, they will even give up their spiritual practice thinking that, well, meditation is for spiritualization, but I'm getting so much pain. And so they, they, they leave the path. So it's important to remember that in these moments when we have these irreconcilable situations which defy explanation, we try to find the meaning in it, either with our willpower or with the help of a friend. And when we can do that, we actually can transform our, you know, it, it, that is the huge leap in our evolutionary growth at that time. You know, I was in South Africa in 1990 when Nelson Mandela was released from prison. And, you know, 27 years in prison, he had transformed that potential hatred towards his tormentors and the tormentors of the, of his people into a kind of a, a spiritual strength, a tremendous strength that actually helped him when he, he, his first speech after he came out of the jail was so moving and so conciliatory. <laughs> I still remember. And when you, when I used to hear the, the national anthem of the African people singing, there's a, like a wave of triumph and hope, which you feel so deeply because the, the struggles they went through and the, the, you know, the final attainment of their, of their goal of a, of a new country, independent country where everybody had the right to vote was, was realized. And when I was a little boy, I used to live in, in, uh, or I would visit my, my grandmother lived in the low income areas of, of Detroit. And I used to love the, uh, the Afro American gospel music because again, this, this feeling that the people have suffered so many decades and centuries and they've been able to connect to the higher, 
higher self, higher being through music and song. And that, you know, when I hear that, it, it touches some unused chord and it, it provokes tears because it's so, it's so, so powerful. So the, these moments of great pain and suffering, they are also the greatest opportunities for us. And so when we are able to find the, the beauty in that, you know, as it, you know, some people say we are spiritual beings having a human experience. So as spiritual beings, we, we seek to find spiritual meaning in, in, in all things. And that is, you know, the, the way to go and to, to, to overcome these moments when we're, we're just on our knees. And that's why in the spiritual path, the most important quality is surrender. When we, can surrender to that, that, that thing which is in our mind, which already knows what's, what's happened and, and what's going to happen. That all knowing, responsive, benevolent consciousness. Then we, we find a way out and we actually evolve to our next evolutionary level. So another story I, I'd like to share was when I was um, back in, uh, in the Philippines about 20, year, 20 years ago, what, one of the members, her, she, she found her son's uh, body hanging from a rope in her bathroom. And that was such a, a moment of such a shock and confusion and anxiety. As she dealt with this, the suicide of her son, she began to get very, very sublime spiritual experiences that left her in tears for hours on end and you know she had already been meditating for 30 years but those moments were the richest spiritual moments in her life as she she found she tried to find a way and surrender to that higher being that you know how to extricate herself from this situation and 20 years onward She's never had those experiences again. We all have dark, hidden corners. We all have things which, you know, we don't want to talk about. Things that are not discussed in the, on the dinner table or in, in group gatherings. Things we're hiding from. But sometimes life's circumstances, they force us to look at those things and face them. And those are the greatest opportunities for spiritual advancement. You know, I was, it was back in 1984 and I was assigned by our association to organize a global conference in the West African country of Ghana. And it so happened at that time, there was a, a drought in the country. So there was a, a rationing of uh, basic supplies like rice, flour, salt, sugar. And also we had to ration our water uh, that we were using every day. And uh, Ghana had was in a, a, a conflict with the neighboring country, Nigeria. So their oil and gas supplies were cut off and people were, were in their cars and they were queuing for three days and nights to get the 20 liters of petrol that they could use to move in, the, in their vehicles. So with this situation, I was to organize the conference and then three weeks before it was to happen, I, I got malaria. So I'm, you know, lying on my flat on my back, uh, looking up at the ceiling, twiddling my thumbs, and uh, that the surrender moment came. If you really want me to do this this work, then uh, please <laughs> find a way to help me here. Uh, and you know, it was after that, it, you know, I, I managed to get better, and it was all automatic pilot. I, I felt like I wasn't doing anything; it it all just happened. The water was arranged. The food was arranged through the contacts of our members. We could bring uh, um, the, the members, the devotees from the hinterland to the, to the capital city. And the, and the conference went off without a hitch with enough food, water, and, and everything for the five days. So, you know, the, there's a, another story about a great, a great saint who, who actually was a sinner before. <laughs> Something like what happened to St. Paul in the Christian tradition. His name was Milarepa. 
And in the middle of Repa, he, you know, he had a guru, Marpa, and Marpa, you know, tested him. And he, he said, now you build a stone tower for, for, for us to stay. And so Milarepa would build a stone tower. And then after, you know, it was built, then Marpa would say, oh, tear it down and build it here. And so this continued. And um, eventually on the eighth stone tower that Milarepa built, he was thinking, you know, you know, this is, uh, I have to find somebody else, a more compassionate master for my spiritual progress. And it was at that time when he just completely gave up and probably all of those negative reactions from his actions of past were gone. Marpa initiated him and, and Milarepa attained the highest state of enlightenment through his spiritual austerities. So coming to present day situation all over the globe, it's very obvious that there's so much suffering Humanity has been brought to its knees on a collective level. And surveys have shown that the best way to avoid depression from job loss is by doing volunteer work. Again, reaching out, connecting with others, making that social connection. So that's finding the beauty and the opportunity in those horrific moments of great suffering. And I think that's what's happening to all of us as a human race because it looks like we're also on the cusp of a new evolutionary leap. And for that to happen, we all are going through great changes and a lot of suffering as we make that movement. And in moving that way, life takes upon a more beautiful meaning and, and purpose. Thank you. Namaskar.